Hello and welcome to the Sea of Thieves Academy. Set up with new players in mind, especially those joining from the PlayStation 5 platform. Today we're going to get you set up on Sea of Thieves, but before you set sail there are a few things you need to know to get started. First things first, you'll need a Microsoft account to link to your PlayStation account. This might seem a bit odd on PlayStation, but it is necessary to play the game. So if you've not already done so, make sure you create the Microsoft account before you start playing. Also, here's a quick tip. There's a known bug with HDR right now that can make the horizon way too bright. So consider turning HDR off on your PlayStation 5 for a cleaner view while you're out exploring. Trust me, you'll thank me later when you can actually see those distant islands. Alright, with that sorted, let's get the fun part, creating your pirates. But hold on, there's a few things you need to bear in mind before we start sail on our first adventure. The appearance is mostly permanent. Your pirate's face, body size, even their gender can only be changed later with a special potion. These cost real world money, so we're going to choose wisely when we go through. Okay, take your time when you're choosing your pirate. It's the person you're going to be stuck with for quite a while. Hitboxes don't matter. This guy will be just as easy to hit as this woman. This woman will be just as easy to hit as this guy. So the size of your pirate makes absolutely no difference to somebody shooting at you or trying to hit you with a sword. It is easier to hide behind a tree when you're skinny than it is when you're larger. So if you're hiding on a deck, for example, maybe the smaller pirates will be better for you. So the way I do this is eight different pirates on this radial wheel. We can generate more pirates as we go. He's quite large. I don't think I'll choose that one. Don't like that one. Don't really like that one. I don't normally choose women when I'm playing the game, so let's regenerate all. You'll notice that they're all holding things. So this guy's got a barrel in his hands. That doesn't matter. When he joins the game, he won't have that barrel. That's just aesthetics for this. I do like the look of that one, however, so I'm going to make him a favourite. He looks quite funny, so I'll favourite him. Working my way around again, and I'm just going to regenerate again. But I'll do this till I fill, fill the wheel up. Remember, clothing doesn't matter, but I do like the look of him. Hair colour, hairstyles, beards, tattoos, all of those we can change in the game later as we unlock things the same as clothing. So let's just regenerate again. He's quite skinny, isn't he? I'll take him. I want that one. I don't know about him. I might come back to him. Oh, so we've got two left, so I'm going to keep regenerating. I don't want a woman. He looks pretty funny. So, I've got eight. Like I said, take your time going around. If you don't like the look of their face, you're going to be stuck with them for a while unless you spend money to regenerate. Look through the hair, the hair colour, the facial hair, the tattoos, the clothing. You can change all that later. I think I'm going to go with this guy. Oh, let's go. So he's, he's not going to come through the game with that uh, item, but there you go. There's your character creation in a nutshell. Before we jump into the game, we'll change some settings. Be aware that some settings can't be changed once you're actually in the game, so now's the best time to do it. Keyboard and mouse, well, I don't use keyboard and mouse, so I'm not going to change anything there right now. Controller, these are all personal preferences, but the first thing I'm going to do is go down to Pirate Wheel of Emotions, currently on down at the D, on the D-pad. I'm going to change that personally to left on the D-pad. I'm going to leave push to talk off because I'm going to use my mute button on my controller to um, mute my chat. 
text chat. I'm going to set that to down on the D-pad. And then the only other thing I'm going to do is set food to right on the D-pad because that gives me a quick heal. Okay, you're going to come out of the controller, down to input. I think I'm going to change in the input, although you can go across and change your um, mouse sensitivity. There's lots of different settings in here that you can play with to find what you're... Find what you're comfortable with, I suppose. Gameplay, I'm going to choose some things, change some things in gameplay. So the first thing I'm going to do is reduce hold to interact. I'm going to turn that to on. I'm going to turn disable ship sitting interactions to on. And I'm going to do the same for ship trinket interactions. This just means that I won't accidentally click on those when I'm trying to fire a cannon or pick up a resource box, for example. I'm going to work my way down. <clears throat> Personally, I'm going to turn off if I can find it. Um, I don't want the camera swaying on zip lines. And server authoritative hit markers, I want those on. Otherwise, what can happen is my game will show a hit marker, but the server hasn't registered it. So I think I've hit something, but I haven't actually hit it. For HUD, We'll go down to fixed position for interact prompts, which means that it's easier to see them on the screen. Otherwise, what can happen, especially when you're bobbing up and down in the water, for example, trying to grab a box or trying to grab onto the ladder, as it's bobbing up and down, you can't see um, when to press. But by doing this, it'll keep it in the middle. Also moving down to banners, I do not want cinematic uh, island banners because it blocks off too much of the screen. So I'm going to turn that to slim line. You should have no HDR um, in your settings. If you do, as I said before, I suggest at this stage you turn them off until they fixed it. Then I'm going to go down to video settings. I would leave the brightness and contrast on this at the default 50. If you need to change either, change them on your monitor. The auto skip intro um, Animatic, I'm going to turn that on because I don't want to see that animation every time I play the game. Moving down to graphics, this is probably one of the most important things. Your graphics you want set at 90. Its default is 78. And I will show you the difference between the two. 78 and 90, but it makes a decent amount of difference. I suggest straight away you turn that up to 90. Moving down to PlayStation, unlink account, we don't want to do that. So we'll move down to audio settings. On the audio settings, you can set them up as you feel um, comfortable to do. I'm going to set my audio output to headphones because that's what I play on. I also want to come down to player chat indicator and I want to turn that on. Because if somebody's talking to me, I want to see... Uh, a screen indicator that somebody is talking to me because they could be behind me and I won't know if they are talking to me. And I'm also going to turn on aim assist audio and I'll just get a little click as I'm coming over to aim at something. Next one we come down to is language and there's a few things I'm going to turn on here. I'm going to turn on text to speech override and I'm going to turn on speech to text override. And I'm also going to turn on translate other players, especially in Europe. It just helps with from other countries in Europe and you'll be able to understand. Matchmaking preferences. This is probably the most important for new players, especially PlayStation 5 players, where most other people playing on PlayStation are going to be in the same boat as you, whereas most other people on PC and Xbox have been playing for a long time. So my suggestion is you don't allow crossplay, and you have play initially with um, console players using controllers and not keyboards. This will just even things out a little bit until you get better. Obviously, once you're getting better at the game, 
turn crossplay on. Play with the PC players. Play with the Xbox players that's been playing for years. But just at the beginning, just to keep it at a low level, you will still bump into people playing on PlayStation who have played this game for years on other platforms. But this will just give you a little bit of uh, of a helping hand to start you out. Pirate profile. If you delete your pirate, that's it. You wipe everything to do with your pirate. So I suggest you do not do that. Captain positions, uh, permissions rather. Do you want to allow uh, crew to customize your ship? I would suggest no. Once you've purchased your own ship, you probably don't want other people to change the sails and change the paint and colors and everything. So but that's up to you. Crew management, allow friends to join me. Yes, that's always a good one to do. Guild management, I would leave that as it is for now. Custom servers, we're not going to touch that. And the same as credits, we don't need to do that there. So that's it. That's our basic settings before we set off in the game. In our next tutorial, we'll talk about going into the maiden voyage. Until then, catch you later.